A little bit of an unconventional show tonight for the third and long boys, but we're back. Brought to you by Red Dot Radio. Fresh off a of Christmas uh, Christmas weekend and, and kind of moving into the week closer to New Year's, but how's everybody doing? We're kind of having to do this on Zoom due to being a little bit out of the uh, out of the city, but how's everybody's uh, weekend or how was your Christmas and how's everybody doing tonight? Good. Solid, yeah. man. Solid. Go ahead, Justin. We'll, 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 we'll adjust as we go. It's kind of a nightmare situation for me. You know, I'm not too good with this electronics here. Kind of took me a while to get on, but uh, I had a good Christmas. I hope you guys had a great Christmas as well. Electronically challenged. Yeah, we, we, we had to get, for those that don't know, we had to get Justin to spoon feed him onto the Zoom call, figure it all out. Um, his name is Cade Killingsworth for the day, for those that are watching on YouTube. <laughs> um, so shout out to Cade for coming through and allowing us to do this uh, with three guys. Um, but solid Christmas for me on my end. You know, I always love giving presents to those that take care of me. Um, probably the best feeling about it. And then anything you get on top of that is just gravy. So um, <clears throat> pretty awesome. Spent a lot of the Christmas watching some, some, some bowl games that usually teams you don't talk too much about during the year. Um, but uh, yeah, let, let's go through, I guess, recapping some of the games from last the last week a little bit of a shortened show tonight as well for those listening but we'll get into a little bit of uh, like jt said get into a little bit of the recap of some of the games uh from last week i guess did you want to start it off with this eastern michigan san jose state game oh uh, yeah we can talk a little briefly about that um we didn't hammer it too much on what's the line last week um i think uh what that game kind of showed me was the Mountain West top to bottom was very bad this year. Yeah. Um, your top teams and, you know, Fresno, you know, was pretty damn solid. Uh, Boise was solid. Um, you know, even who, who finished third Air Force. Dude. Oh, let's talk about Air Force for a second. See, this is we were in a group chat, the three of us and Justin Ferris was, telling uh, me Baylor is the play. Baylor is the play. Baylor is the play. And you did not believe me. Justin, what what what, were, what did you feel about the Baylor Bears going into their game against Air Force this past week? I mean, I just thought they were the better football team. I thought they had the better athletes. I thought, what was I saying? I was like, no way in hell Baylor loses to Air Force Academy, right? JT was saying th the fact that the cold weather was going to bode well for Air Force. I didn't think the cold weather was really going to be a problem for Baylor since, you know, they're in Dallas, so it does get cold in Dallas. But dude, they just got Waco. punched. They, or I mean, Waco. But dude, they just got kind of punched in the mouth the whole game. Like they really, they couldn't move the ball at all. Um, Air Force kind of just ran it down their throats, as as expected from a team like that that runs that kind of offense. Um, and Baylor really had no answer. And you would think that a, a team like Baylor, being a Dave Aranda a defensive guy, you would think that they would be able to make some adjustments and stack the box and and figure out how to stop that offense. Um, going into the second half, but obviously they didn't and kind of got ran off the field there a little bit towards the end. I think if uh, if you're TCU and you're sitting there in the in the suites of your own stadium watching your most hated rival come in to play their bowl game at your stadium, that alone is a flex and a half. And then to watch them get slacked by a military academy on your own field, I mean, I think if you're a TCU Horn Frog, Christmas came a little early and you don't really care what happens in the Michigan game next week. Um, but for Baylor, it was a bad look. I know they're, you know, quote unquote, the, the worst Big 12 team to make a bowl game. Um, but for a team that was in a lot of games with a chance to win it, I mean, it was kind of a, a letdown to see them just kind of get slacked like that. Um, yeah, it, it kind of kills me to see that uh, uh, this Baylor team that won against the Rebels in the Sugar Bowl last year only win six games and lose lose the season in a bowl game in the Arm Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl game against an Air Force who um, shout out to them. They had a great season. They went 10 and three this year and they're moving in the right direction. I know their their quarterback, um, what's his name? Martin Hazik Daniels um, played good. And that was his last game. He's been there for a while, but um, looks like they should be able to, to put some guys in there that can back him up moving forward. And I don't see them um, going anywhere for a while with a 10 and one season like that. Mm-hmm. 
I think the Mac has shown a lot of prize uh, this uh, this so far. I mean, Toledo had a big win over Liberty. Um, I picked yeah, did that. Anybody see that coming? That. Did you see that coming? I was, wrong, I was wrong in the chat on that one as well. I for the same reason. I thought Liberty just had better athletes. The the fact that Hugh left, I for a school like Liberty, I didn't think that was going to be like a big deal. They didn't really have a lot of guys go in the portal or leave. So I thought, you know, they were going to kind of go out there. It's like, hey, it's our last game. Like, let's ball out. I did not expect them to lose to Toledo. I didn't really expect that at all either. Um, kind of the same – it was kind of the same issue for them as, as for Baylor. They really had a tough time moving the ball as well against Toledo's defense, which was unexpected from a pretty high-powered Liberty offense throughout majority of the season. And they couldn't get off the field on third down. I mean – Toledo seemed like they got every single third down. Yeah. I mean, their starting quarterback threw for 84 yards, which is kind yeah, of – No, Liberty's quarterback was awful. I, I think I even tweeted. I was like, this was their quarterback all year? Like, holy <laughs> – I was going to make another point. Like, speaking of how bad the Mountain West has been, the Hawaii Bowl, San Diego State, they were a seven-point favorite. I had them covering. You guys didn't. And what's the line? Y'all had Middle Tennessee plus seven. I've never seen a team win a football game with negative 65 yards rushing. I've never seen it. Wait, what? Middle Tennessee had negative 65 yards rushing in the game against San Diego State and won the football game. Now, a lot of that had to do with sacks, but. Negative 66 yards rushing. That's actually very impressive. And they won by two points. Um. Yeah, I, I can't say that I've ever seen that myself either, JT. I really don't know how they ended up pulling that one off. I think that was kind of a snake win for me on on what's the line there for the uh, for the last episode. But, um, yeah, I, I know I got a dub there. But, yeah, I can't say that I've ever seen a team with negative 66 rushing yards uh, win a game, especially a bowl game, kind of a big game there. Yeah, and, and another thing, their kicker, mind blinking his name, um, was – 0 for 9 from kicks above 40 yards and above this season, nailed three in the game, and they went by two. He was their offense. It was unreal. I, I, as, a, as, a, as a better, I, I don't see how – that's not the wrong bet. It's the correct bet. It just didn't work. Keep Rankin? Yeah, Rankin. Rankin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just nails. Nails from 40-plus. What just happened? Oh, shit. Coastal just scored. Um – yeah, it's bomb. Do have a game on tonight. We need East Carolina to flip it on them. Um, what'd y'all think about Wake, Missouri? I, I thought that was a ratty, weird line. Wake only being a one point favorite. I thought Wake was 10 times better. I went big on them in the bowl pool. Um, I think a couple of you guys had Missouri covering that game or whatnot. Um, <laughs> any shockers there? You had Missouri covering, but I took Wake on the bowl, on the bowl pick. Um, last minute because Missouri had so many opt-outs or guys hit the portal. So, I mean, they were kind of a de depleted team, but Chad Bailey, shout out to Chad kid. Bailey. Our shout former, out Chad Bailey. Are from our high school balled out. I think he had eight and a half tackles, one and a half sacks, couple for a loss. Uh, he's wearing the captain C. He is returning for his fifth year next year. Is he really? Yeah, he's coming back. So that's good for Missouri returning to, returning to captain on defense. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, Justin. Nine total tackles, seven solo, one and a half sacks, two ta two and a half tackles for loss, one pass deflection. Um, the guy was flying around the field. So shout out Chad Bailey. I did notice that his name was getting called a lot in that game. Um, but as far as from what I saw from Wake, Sam Hartman look, looked honestly really good, managed the game well. And I think that he was just a little bit better than what M Mizzou was expecting from him in that game. Um, the, Wake didn't run the ball all too well, but did enough. But they had uh, one guy, uh, A.T. Perry. I mean, this guy had all the looks in, in the reception, the, re the receiving room over there for Wake. But, um, yeah, Wake kind of pulled it out there. I know we lost that one with taking Mizzou, but I'm intrigued to see what Mizzou does moving forward here with uh, the rest of their team and looking ahead to the next season. No. Is Drinkwitz, is Drinkwitz on the hot seat going in the offseason? Hmm. No, uh, I don't think. Do you just see an extension? Being, in, I mean, this is year four for him. They haven't had a winning season yet. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, I mean, what what's your realistic expectations for Missouri and in the, in the conference that they're in? 
I mean, is seven and five, eight and four unachievable there? I don't think so. But I mean, a six one season. If Kansas, if the Jayhawks are going to be right down the street and be competitive now, I mean, they're competing for the same players. Yeah, recruiting wise. Yeah. Chan, like you were saying, it, it, Wake Forest is in and on a high. It's looking like it's actually turning into a low, though. Sam Hartman He's goes, leaving. goes into the transfer portal. So basically, they got they're restarting at the quarterback position next year. I know we were kind of talking about that. Did he actually ever really enter his name into the transfer portal? Did he just like leave and commit to ND? Or is he going in? Is it is it official ND? I don't think it's official. Okay. I was reading. either way, either way, we got a guy who just played his bowl game, didn't hit the portal pre bowl game like a lot of guys. And then all of a sudden is not going to the draft and he's coming back to go to a different school. That's the first of many potential scenarios that we might see across the country oh, going Penny. forward. Yeah, Penix is a one. Michael Penix, if there's no NIL, Michael Penix Jr. is going to the NFL this year. But he yeah, would absolutely. Really be a third, a third or fourth rounder like Sam Hartman because he's not Levis, he's not – Bryce Young, and he's not C.J. Stroud, right? Or maybe even uh, Richardson. Richardson. So you're probably a late third to fourth round pick. These guys are going to get more money guaranteed in the, their final year in college probably, especially Sam Hartman going to Notre Dame. He could easily probably make a million dollars. He's not getting that on a on a sixth round, fifth round pick deal, you know? He's probably making six or seven hundred thousand dollars. Do you, do you think right. he's, he's worth a million I mean, dude, I think if you put Sam Hartman on Notre Dame's team this year, they would have been lethal. Yeah. I guess we can talk a little bit more about that that NIL and transfer portal stuff here in a little bit because I, I had some takes on that as well. Um, but I know we had a question that, that we were kind of uh, thinking about here, I guess to say the least, would be what did you like and dislike about bowl season so far, I guess? Um, no, there's still a lot of games coming up and a lot of big games. The playoffs obviously coming up here shortly as well. But what would you say that you guys like and dislike up to this point in bowl season so far? I mean, I, I love the most about how the small schools, they take this shit seriously. They don't have opt-outs. Maybe they have some guys leave the portal for various reasons. Um, but they want to be there. They want to play in that stadium in front of 5,000 people. Um, it doesn't matter to them. It's a chance for them. You know, it's kind of what college football was built off of, the student athlete that doesn't go pro. Um, and those guys just want, you know, two, three more weeks with their boys and to be in a town and just cap off all the hard work, all the 4 a.m. workouts uh, with one more day and one more win. I mean, yeah, they're not playing for a national title, but, I mean, the chance to get a trophy and a ring and a bowl gift, I mean, I think it's awesome. I, I agree. I agree there, J2. Do you have some, Jay? No, I, I was going to say I liked everything you said there. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think getting to go to, like, let's say a bowl game, um, which I thought was pretty cool coming up. I know we'll talk a little bit about the Ole Miss game tomorrow, but a lot of these guys from Mississippi getting to travel to Texas, getting to experience Houston, um, getting to experience different parts of the, the country, um, better yet the world. I mean, going down to Hawaii for, for a bowl game as well. Guys getting to travel – um, getting to get all the swag from these different bowl games, and then obviously getting to showcase your skills one last time uh, before you hit the off season, whether whether where you think you're going in the NFL, the transfer portal, or continuing to play at your your current team. I think it's pretty cool to see those guys enjoy and enjoy the trips out of the, uh, the the bowl games as well as compete one last time. You got something you like, or is that you just kind of picking that? Yeah, no, I like. I, one of the things I always like to see is, like, how conferences stack up. Like, what's the conference record in the bowl? Right. This is like – you see you, – I, I don't know if it's fair, but it's like sometimes you see SEC is like, oh, we're the best conference, we're the best conference, and then they have one of the worst records in the deal. And But people are like, oh, they're playing better bowl games. You know what I mean? This is, there's so many different ways you can spin it. Uh, but it's always cool to see, like, Conference USA or a, a fun belt or someone like that, that they're undefeated. And like you said, JT, these smaller smaller schools do show up, tend to show up more in these bowl games. 
I guess what what I what I would say I dislike about it is for some reason I feel like there hasn't been th- that enormous hype around bull season this year as there has been potentially in the in past years. Um, I don't know what it maybe had been about this year, but I guess a lot of it has to do with where college football is going with the transfer portal and with the opt outs. And I know that was another topic of discussion here on the show, but um, I guess to, to, to my knowledge and what I think, in my opinion, as far as what I dislike is just the, the overall hype around bowl season. Cause I know we got really hype um, ourselves just about the actual, the pick them and, and having the, the, the bowl pick them pool and things like that. But um, I, what are y'all, what are y'all's thoughts as far as disliking something from bowl season or do y'all have any opinions on that as far as the hype goes? I got a thing I dislike. I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback off yours for a second. I dislike to that point fans saying these games don't matter. Right. From an outside perspective. Yeah. It may not matter to you because you were hoping in September, your team was playing in the final four and now you're playing in a one gamer exhibition, whatever you want to call it. But to the players, it does matter. You know, it may not matter to the, first, second, third round picks that are opting out to protect their draft stock that are already locked it up. But to everybody else on that roster, it definitely matters. You got guys, I mean, especially with the portal now, when guys are hitting the portal, like if you were third string and the second stringer left and the first stringer opted out, you're starting in this bowl game. Like you have a key opportunity to go into the spring and lock up that position. Like that shit does matter. Like, and just because the team is playing – you know, if Ole Miss is playing in the Texas Bowl against Texas Tech tomorrow when going into November, Ole Miss is like, hey, if we're 11-1, and one, we beat Georgia, we're playing TCU. You know, like that changed. It doesn't mean that Ole Miss's third-string linebacker shouldn't get rep- ready for this game. And that's where I have a pet peeve with fans on that. We have zero – we have uh, – Ole Miss actually has – saw a stat today that Ole Miss actually has zero players opting out. Um, of that's the- great. Which is, which is impressive, which I love. I guess that has that that goes a lot with culture, but also just for the love of the game, essentially there, which a lot of people I feel like have, have lost that love just due to all the money that's been thrown around the NCA the past couple of years. One thing I do dislike about the, the bowl games right now, I don't like like we got this game right here. We got East, you know, East Carolina and Coastal Carolina. They're playing in the Birmingham Bowl. I don't like it when bowl games are put into towns where it's not enjoyable for the players, you know, because the the bowl (laughs) games are going to make their money on TV numbers. It doesn't matter if they sell tickets or not. It really doesn't. Don't put these guys in towns where they're playing in some high school stadium. We were were watching Memphis. Memphis was playing a bowl game earlier today in SMU stadium. Like, come on, man. They already played there this year or last year. Like they don't, there's no hype excitement of being there. And I know not all these bowl games should be in NFL stadiums, but at least put them in like just nicer areas where they can enjoy a week, you know, have a vacation on them. I agree. You got I agree. I mean, I, no, I, I just, I do. <laughs> the worst part about bowl games is definitely not everyone playing. You know what I mean? I already, back in the day, it was like, let's go. You're filling out the, you were filling it out with, you know, pen and paper. Like you're who's winning all the bowl games, right? Yeah, you're you're faxing them over, scanning. You didn't have to you didn't have to worry about like oh the quarterback's not last second, the quarterback's not playing. Like that was sort of things that you back in the day you had to worry about. So yeah. it's definitely something to get used to. The playoff definitely, I think, is kind of watered down these bowl games. But I mean, it, it is what you make of it. You know what I mean? Like it's up to the kids or the athletes to make the best out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I guess you that, think it's, go ahead, JT. Do, do you think it's a good test of your depth now that you have guys not playing that were playing in the first 12 games of the year? Oh, yeah. That's a great, that's a great I question. Texas, I think Texas is a perfect example of it. It's like you're going to figure out what you got at running back. Uh, you got Roshan and Bijan out. So you got Jonathan Brooks and a freshman at, at running back. Like you said, they're going to get all the touches. Let's see what what they're about. Right. Which and, what which go ahead. I'm sorry, Chan, I want to cut you off again. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. I was going to say that to I was going to bring that up to Justin knowing that um those guys those backs are out for Texas coming up this week and and it's like next guy up. So I I think to your point JT, I think it's a great um test to see how deep you are at, at any given position because um 
at, at any given time as what we've seen in the past couple of years in college football with injuries and, and obviously transfers like we this hot topic has been. Uh, you never know when your name's going to be, be called and, and have to st- get in there and make a play. And I'll argue as a fan, being a Texas fan, like that should make you excited. You've already seen all you've needed to see out of uh, Robinson and, and Johnson for the last three, four years. You don't need to see any more. You need to know who you got next year. And if you win or lose this bowl game against Washington, is it really going to change the trajectory of your offseason? I don't really think so. I don't think all these recruits are going to look at it and say, oh, well, you lost the bowl game, so I'm not going to go there. Or, oh, shit, look how bad they played. Maybe that's how bad they'll play going forward without those guys or whatnot. I, I don't think it really matters at that point. So, yeah, let's see what you got. Let's see who's going to be RB1 next year. Let's see who your starting left tackle is going to be like. Let them get some game experience because the spring game, everyone knows the spring game is not something you should look at and be like, oh, dude, look at that kid dueling up against our third string walk on corner. Like, right. no, like no one needs to see that. It doesn't matter. So, no, I, I agree. I'm with all, with you guys on that one. I guess and le- leading us into this transition of talking about the transfer portal killing bowl games. What do you think your thoughts are uh, on that, on that specific topic there? Does, do you think that the transfer portal kills bowl games or do you think that they're, that they can be what they used to be as far as hype and, and depth and players playing in these and getting the guys behind the teams to play in these games? Well, the two notes that I wrote down for this was that I think the transfer portal should be delayed. I think the season can be, should be completely concluded. So call it January 10th or so. That being said, that won't happen unless National Signing Day moves from, what, December 15th, whatever it was this year, and then just having – like, if you want early signing day to be January and the next one February, that's fine, you know? Because, like, a lot of portal guys are entering because they see who's committed, who's going to sign and all that, and who's coming in. And if there's all this transaction going on with NILs and poaching and all that, well, then I think these coaches are having a nightmare situation of – do I put more focus on recruiting in next year's roster or do I prepare for this one game we have left on the schedule? Because they're kind of conflicted right now. Like, as an A&M fan, like, with the way NIL and the poaching has been, like, I'm honestly not all that mad because I know all of our focus is on next year's roster right now. Already, versus, yeah. Right. And, like, in other – you know, and I'm not saying other coaches are caring one way or the other, but that's a lot of fucking work. This is a full-time job. They're not getting a Christmas break. No, not at all. Yeah. Like, that's insane to me, like, how they probably spent their Christmas day making several phone calls, not watching their child open up their fucking gift. No, yeah, it is true. Because you got to be like, yo, Merry Christmas. How's the fam doing? Like, how is is opening gifts? Hold on, wait, let me call this five-star. Like, oh, how's your mom? Like, were you at your mom? Were you at your dad's? Like, it's like, there's so much. But what's crazy, like you said, JT, is that maybe they should push it back. The NCAA just made the rule on making it like specific dates that you have to enter by. So I feel like they're almost kind of shooting themselves in the foot by telling kids you got to be in the portal before the bowl games. They're not going to play. Yeah, I guess. So it sucks. Yeah, that does suck. But that's what's crazy is as far as the timeline goes of when you can start entering to when you can, when you have to stop entering. That's such a big gap there because it's feel I feel like it was very hot like two weeks ago and then I wake up this morning and the first thing I do is check Twitter and I scroll up on Twitter and I see somebody's entered the transfer portal and I'm like how like how long is this going to keep going before all these guys soon have to commit get ready for the next team they're going to be on or figure out if they're going to be able to go back to the team that they they were trying to leave from it's a nightmare and another another example that just popped in my head when you were talking Shan was. What if you were that guy that was second string on the depth chart, you entered the portal, didn't play in your bowl game. The guy that was third string all of a sudden got two, three weeks of practices and a game, and all of a sudden their coach's evaluation of him are much higher than you. You now lost your job, but now you're out there in the portal, and what if you're not getting the offers you thought you were going to get? Exactly. You go you go back, and now like you buried yourself even further in the program you were already at. Like The grass is not always greener. I'm with yeah, you. What was that? What was that 
picture of that kid that made the TikTok. It was like he was in the boat, like swimming back. It was like when you go in the portal and you get like and you get no offers. He's like trying to swim back to his team, like. Yeah. Oh, they said, they, and then they said uh they go they're gonna let you back. He said, We've been to find out. <laughs> yeah, we've been to find out, yeah. Because <laughs> what's wild is when you go into the portal, like if you say you want to go in the portal and that was say that was to happen to you, if you want to come back, they your your scholarship is not guaranteed anymore. So they can like say, Yeah, you can come back, but you're a walk on. Right. All because you wanted to test the waters for two weeks to find out that, hey, maybe you're not as good as you think you are. Right, which would suck, losing losing getting your school paid for, right? <laughs> well, and, and if you're a coach and, like, when a guy enters the portal, you have to assume he's gone, right? You can't assume, oh, he may or may not get an offer. I'll still hold a spot for him. Like, you have to pretty much close that book. And if he's back, he's back. But then, like you said, now there's no scally money and you're, you're a walk-on. Or the guy falls down to the Division Two cracks. Right. Like, I'm curious to know how many guys like that there's going to be. Like, how many guys at the FCS level thought they were going to get that Power 5, G5 offer and never got it? And right. Come back to try and, and, and compete again for their spot on an FCS team? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be crazy. And their spot's taken because the FCS team took the guy that couldn't start at the G5 or the Power 5. Yep. But JT, you want to give us a quick breakdown on the uh, the bull pool for I guess where we're at on us three as well as the uh, the top five. Um, it's been a pretty w- rough one for me to say the least. I guess we're kind of on a timer here before we have to hit a break. But maybe we can if we hit a wall, we'll bring it back. Yeah, I'll keep it really brief. Um, yeah, Chan, you were you were in dead last, but luckily for yeah. you, the Memphis Tigers uh, took care of business. Um, so you jumped up the you jumped up the forty fifth, uh, Justin. You're sitting at twenty fifth right now. I'm sitting at twelfth. Um, we got the top five consisted of Clayton McBride, Ben Forbes, Dalton Culp, Ro Medlin, and Michael Salter. A uh, lot can change from that. Hey, hey, um, let me give us give us our max points that us three can get though, because okay. hey, I, I got a backloaded still, schedule. Still up there. I got a backloaded schedule, boys. I got a lot of high ones still to I come. Think I, do, I think I do too. No, I agree. It, it, that max points is a very important stat. So, um, Chan, you have 775 to go. All right. Justin, you have 783. And I have 874. Oh! <laughs> okay, JT. You? JT's been waiting on this fucking month for his whole life. He's just gonna creep I'm not as, up there to the top. I'm not in as good a position as Ben. Ben is probably Ben Ford is probably the best looking one. He's got 862 left. He's in second place right now. Yeah, well, Ben's my roommate, and I That's watched ben, I watched Ben do the bracket, and boy, did this guy took about 55 minutes. All right, Justin, as you were saying about your roommate, Ben Forbes, go. Yeah, as you were saying. No, he was grinding in the lab. I think it took him like an hour to make all of his picks. He was doing a ton of research. So I'm not surprised um, on his picks, but he's been saying, he's like, dude, it's the underdogs in the bowl games. And he's been right. Like you said, it's all these smaller schools that are grinding them out. So you, So they would say. I agree. It's it's funny because you know on the uh, on the bowl pick them it tells you I guess a percentage of the team picked, and I feel like the percentage of the team picked that's like the heavier side or the higher side has has been really 50-50 up until this point in the bowl season, as per my record at about nine and eleven there. <laughs> It's been bad for the the spreads, at least. Um, money line has been always, uh, you know, the, the the underdog. But the spread, man, these underdogs are covering left and right in these bowl games. 
Um, you think about some of the bigger spreads like uh, like UAB, you know, didn't cover and damn near lost right there two yards away. Um, you know, Georgia Southern lost today to Buffalo. Uh, you know, Fresno covered, but, I mean, SMU couldn't cover on BYU. Marshall had like a 15-point favorite, and they damn near choked it to UConn, right? So, um, just – it's the Bulls. The Bulls are built that way, right? It's supposed to be a tight game. It's supposed to go down to the wire. So, right. um, it's why it's so damn hard to pick, even the money lines. Um, but we got a lot to go on that. Um, a lot of games to go. Chan, you wanted to throw something down on tonight's game. Currently, we got this Carolina game, but you got Wisconsin, Oklahoma State in Phoenix tonight. Yeah. I don't I, – I've, I've been contemplating this pick. I believe in the bull pick. I might have Okie State as of right now. Um, I really wanted to throw a hammer bet on this game tonight <laughs> and, uh, and see uh, what, what I can make happen on, on vacation here. But I, I'm conflicted a little bit on, on the game tonight. I don't know. Uh, Justin, what are your thoughts? I, I know, obviously, that both quarterbacks are out, so that's going to throw a little bit of a whirlwind in both of those offenses. But – um, also, again, a re shout out to John Paul Richardson. He got named the the team captain for the bowl game by his teammates, um, which is a which is a pretty high honor of growth and and commitment and obviously play as well and, and production. So shout out to Mr. Uh, John Paul again. Yeah, shout out to the local boy. Um, I see a play for you, Chan. What the over got? under is 44 and a half for this game. I would hammer that under. I would hammer that under. That under, huh? Here, not only you have both – I mean, both backup quarterbacks doesn't mean they're both going to suck, but, I mean, I'm just looking at schemes. I mean, Oklahoma State, did you guys pay attention to their last five games? No, they were terrible. They Pretty fell bad. apart. I mean, zero points to Kansas State, 16 to Kansas, who probably had the worst defense in that conference, 14 to Iowa State, 13 to Oklahoma, 19 to West Virginia. They can't score. No. And that was with a six-year quarterback. Now they got somebody else the, in there? That was with a solid quarterback. Is Gundy's son playing quarterback tonight? I, I honestly have no idea. But, what, like, Bowden quarterbacks aren't starting, but guess what? At least uh, Oklahoma State has their head coach. Wisconsin's going to go with a second. Is Jim Leonard finishing it out? Or are they going with their, are they going with a second interim coach? That I don't know. It's probably something we should know, huh? No, I think they are because Jim Leonard took the job uh, took a job somewhere else. So Wisconsin's going to be going with uh, a secondary coach. I just I don't know. I I kind of like uh, the line keeps creeping really far towards Wisconsin. I think it's gotten all the way to four. So. Yeah. A lot of these other dogs have been hitting, so I think I'm going to ride the the pokies. All right. Well, we'll see. We've got about a 45-minute window here for me to get something locked in there. But um, I guess we'll break down my team's game tomorrow because that was on the list, the to-do list for today. Unfortunately, I am not going to be boots on the ground. I know I had to break it to the boys earlier um, due to being in the Hill Country, being here in Wimberley, Texas, beautiful, beautiful spot. Uh, blessed to be here with family and not having to work, but really, really wish I could get back to the game tomorrow. But um, little breakdown on the game. I guess I can lead things off of, of what I expect to see. Um, I know last week we talked on on what's the line about this game, and and I think that Ole Miss is going to come out and, and absolutely wax Texas Tech's ass. Not going to sugarcoat it here. Um, from everything I've been reading up until this point of this week, that the practices have been good, everybody's healthy. As I mentioned earlier in the show, everybody is playing. Nobody's opted out of this game. Um, homecoming for Zach Evans, which him being 100% healthy on a homecoming could, could get a little scary. I didn't even think about that, Chan. That's a, yeah. that's a really good point. The North Shore yeah. technology. So – I think that we're going to run the ball and, and play the offense that we've played or run the offense that we've ran all season, um, but probably executed a little bit better after having a few weeks to to really hone in on the, the skill set and what we've been um, trying to accomplish and, and execute all season. So I think the Reds are going to have a big game. I think Judkins and Evans are going to have a great game on the ground. I think Dart's going to do enough to get himself some momentum moving into the next year, and we're going to come out with a dub. 
That is my prediction there. All right. Give me a score, I, give me a score prediction. Um, the over-under right now I think is at 71. Holy. I do not think it goes – I think it's definitely going to be under. Um, I probably could see a 35 to uh, 35 to 21 game. I like that. Okay, so that's not really like an ass whipping. I mean, that's a couple of touchdowns. It depends how it goes. It could. It could be. That's just ground and pound game. First, I, I think I, I think I said last week I thought Ole Miss was going to really handle uh, Tech, but then I kind of started to look. I, I hate to always reference this, but I look back at Texas when they played, when they played uh, Tech, they were without Quinn Ewers, so they relied heavily on the run. That's what Ole Miss relies heavily on the run, I would say, especially this year with Judkins and Evans. Tech did a really good job of kind of holding up Roshan and Bijan in that game. They forced the only fumble on Bijan in that of uh, the whole season in that game. So I think this is going to be a tighter game than most people think, but I do think Ole Miss is going to win the football game. I, I, I also wouldn't be uh... – to But I don't think he's going to go for like the – Two fifteen, two touchdown game. Yeah, I'd also be surprised, or I'd also be uh, on the lookout for some some surprises, maybe some fireworks, fake punt, uh, maybe an onside kick, maybe some reverse double passes. I think that uh, that Kiffin's got a couple things up his sleeve for this game that he's going to be going to be whipping now, just to put Dyson on the cake of the season after how we ended the season, the regular season. I could definitely see him like not punting in this game. Yeah, you might not play. Going for it on every fourth down. Is that, is that my computer playing? Oh, yeah, my computer's playing sounds, of course. Wow. So, of, it's course. The of course. But, JT, do you have any uh, additional thoughts on this game? Do you think we're going to – what What are your thoughts on Tech Ole Miss here? I've been quiet because I was doing some, some, some searching. Um. Texas Tech is uh, seventh in the Big 12 in rush defense, so seven out of ten teams, um, giving up 166 yards rushing a game against a conference that really top to bottom doesn't run the ball a whole lot. I think that's a major, major red flag considering Ole Miss will run the ball in probably 60%, 70% of the plays they run tomorrow. Um oh, you know, first round projected pick Tyree Wilson will be uh, opted out of this game. They'll just be playing right, for Tech. I was about to say that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's playing quarterback for them. I know Donovan Smith has left to play receiver at U of H. Um, that being <laughs> said, I mean, Ole Miss could dominate the shit out of this game and only win by ten. Like they could win like twenty four to ten, but well, it would be. Disgustingly ugly. 35-21. Domination, but it's a win. If you score 35 points, they may only score like six because they won't have any time to actually have the football. Yes, you're right. I, I, th- I think Ole Miss kicks the ever-living shit out of Texas Tech. And what's kind of funny to me, too, is like socially speaking, Texas Tech and Ole Miss are the same school. Ole Miss just dresses up much better than Texas Tech does. <laughs> like, you're that parking lot. Like, I'm going to be boots on the ground for the tailgate. I'm not going to go to the actual game tomorrow. So maybe Justin, I'll see you there. But like, I I'm intrigued to see how those conversations will blend. Like every year, the Texas Bowl will have a pregame concert. Like when a was in it, it was Roger Crager one year. Um, and I want to say Tristan Merez there last year. Was it Merez last year? Yeah, it was pretty sweet. No shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, yeah. I mean, they'll probably have somebody else out there in the parking lot around five thirty, six o'clock. So I want to see how those how those tailgates are going to wind up with those two fan bases. But I mean, academically speaking, uh, Ole Miss is just going to kick the ever living shit out of uh, Texas Tech tomorrow. It was a it was a fun time when we met about four years ago um, at the same stadium for the first game of the season, and Ole Miss handled that game. Look for a lot of the uh, the same energy from that game. In y'all, play, game. y'all played Tech? Y'all played Tech, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Was, What's was funny a- about that season was, like, that was a bad Ole Miss team and a good Tech team, and they kicked the shit out of that. Yeah. 
That like, was, a, like, would y'all go four and eight that year? That was a, that was my senior year of college. That was a roller coaster of a year. Yeah, you start the season on a high note, get punched to the mouth a little bit. You have all the weapons in the world with AJ Brown and DK on the outside. Demarcus Lodge, like, what else could you ask for? And we just put t- put together a freaking piss poor season. Yeah, brutal. Brutal. No bowling. Hey, just, it happens. Yep, shit happens, JT. You're damn right, but. Um, J- Justin, I guess last thing I was going to ask, are you, are you going to be at that game tomorrow? Um, I think I'm going to definitely probably be at that game tomorrow. I'm definitely going to go to the tailgate. Um, Brianna tech went to tech. Yeah. So she's going to go to the game with Freddie. Uh, maybe I can back back door my way in there, but I'm definitely going to go, go to the, uh, tailgate with JT. Get you a little, get you a little backdoor shuffle in there. And how about it? A little free ticket, maybe. Stuff <laughs> Can't complain. Backdoor shuffle. JT, break us, break us down on the back half of the show here with the little what's the line um, moving into the playoff week and New Year's. Yeah, yeah so what's the line? Me dropping the graphics have been completely fucked. I've been doing, like, every Sunday or Monday the whole season, and then, like, this last week with bowl games, I'm like, oh, shit, like, there's not enough games for me to drop it consistently on the same day. So I'll have the graphic updated standings and all that released on our Instagram come Thursday morning when we have Ole Miss covered, Wisconsin, Oklahoma State covered, all that. Um, but the next <laughs> slate of games we're going to talk about, um, we got the two playoff games in here. We got the New Year's Six, and then we got, I thought, the two best bowl games outside of those. How should we rank those? You want, you want to see the, the playoff games last? Yeah, let's we'll play off last. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, okay. So here's, I'll, I'll start with the, the two non New Year's Six games. Uh, we got the Horns and the Huskies down in San Antonio at the Alamo Bowl. Uh, the Horns open as a three point favorite. No Bijan, no Roshan. Phoenix is playing. Where are you guys at on that one? Uh, Texas is pretty. Uh, is is typically pretty good in the Alamo Bowl. Um, historically, uh, that being said, I, I don't want to bet with my, my heart on this and cause I've been burned so many times in this exact specific situation. So I'm going to go with the Washington plus the points. Um, I do think the horns squeak out a win there. I just, I just think that the, all the opt-outs and, and the big dogs that aren't playing for Texas is going to hurt them a little much along with Penix coming back and playing, um, but give me Washington plus the points, but I think the, the horns may squeak out a, a maybe a game win field goal there. Bert, game winner. Oh, you got him covering. <laughs> no, I got I got no, I got Washington covering. Okay, I want to make sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about like maybe a one or two point game winner. Justin, where you got? I think I might surprise you guys here. Oh boy. Um, I am going to not bet with my heart. I'm going to bet with my head. I'm going to take Washington plus three here. Um, I think no Bijan, no Roshan, no Demarion over Sean on defense is uh, a recipe for disaster for this Horns team. Those are like three captains of the team, actually. Um, three of their th- three best players. Michael Penix coming back, I think, was kind of a surprise to a lot of people. I kind of thought that he was definitely going to go to the draft after the year that he just had. Like, right. what more does he have to prove kind of thing? Like, is he going to have a better year next year? Probably not. But um, I hope Texas sweeps one out. But I think Washington's probably going to win this football game. I'm going to take Washington. Yeah, I got, plus I got three. Washington covering the three as well. Um Texas defending the pass has been a real struggle for them this year, and this is probably the best passing attack top to bottom they'll, they've faced all year. Um, you know, Alabama wasn't good at throwing the ball this year. Oklahoma struggled. Um, Kansas may have been the best offense, at least passing attack they've seen all season. Um, I'm going to say that uh, it's going to be a battle for them, and you got you're going to have to ask Quinn to do something he hasn't really done this year and, like, go off um because i mean you you know their defense is going to be stack the box force them to throw it right um so i mean he's going to really have to be 
You know, I'm not going to say he has to throw for 400 or anything crazy like that, but he's got to throw for 260, 270 and keep the rushing attack balanced. Right. I'll say that. So I got Washington. Um, other game we got is the uh, the the, uh, the Gator Bowl, Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. This year's uh, Notre Dame versus South Carolina. South Carolina had a hot end of the season, knocking off Clemson and Tennessee, ending their playoff hopes. Notre Dame came uh, on from a shitty September that they had. Notre Dame opens a two point favorite. How you, how you guys looking at this one? Go no Cox. I think I'm going to roll with the Cogs here. I think Spencer, Rat- Spencer Rattler's playing in this game. Uh, supposedly, they haven't really gotten uh, if he's uh, yes or no if he's coming back next year. Like maybe he's still considering the draft. Uh, so it, in the mind of, I'm thinking like Spencer Rattler probably is. He's probably thinking like, hey, if I if I ball out here this last stretch of games, you know, I could go to the draft maybe. So I'm gonna roll with Spencer Rattler in the in the fighting game cockies plus two. Yeah. I I think that this is gonna be another tight game as well. Um, as mentioned earlier in the show, a lot of these bowl games are anticipated to be tight games. Um, this is this is two really good teams going at it that came on strong at the end of the year. Uh, no Michael Meyer Mayer for Notre Dame. Um, no weapons. That, that's a big weapon lost there. That being said, I'm going to have to go with the Cox as well, uh, plus the points. It's kind of a yeah, point I, think, there, though. I think South Carolina is kind of like LSU 2019. Once LSU got that Bama win under their belt, they all of a sudden became a completely different team. South Carolina is going to ride the highs off the Tennessee win, which obviously they walked into Clemson, not scared at all when the last 15 years Clemson has just kind of boat raced them. For the most part, uh, I think it's going to carry on into this game. South Carolina covers. And to Spencer Rattler's point, I mean, you consider in the draft, you kind of finagling, flirting with the media, talking about what you're going to do next year. Come on, man. Like, yeah. you, you had <laughs> you know you like you had a great game against Tennessee, but, like, one good game and 25 bad to average games at best. I Come on, man. Just come back for another year. Humble yourself again. Don't go back to who you were when you were in high school. <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck man uh, let's, let's go over to New Year's Six Bowl the, the bowl games that count for the casual fans out there um, let's go with my one of my intriguing ones we got the, the Cotton Bowl uh, Tulane Green Wave representing the G5 taking on the USC Trojans USC opens as a two point favorite this is sketch hey this is this is the one where Vegas is talking to you this is the one where I'm when when you just said that you, you didn't I didn't know what the line was. I was like, Caleb Williams is playing in this game. Oh, USC is going to beat them by 21 points. You just said the line was two. Yeah, so that, Vegas knows something that I do not know. Um, and for that, Tulane, Tulane's a good squad. Remember, they they bitch squad. Their, coach their coach stayed. Their coach stayed. Um. Yeah, but I'm gonna take USC minus two, boys. But guess what? I could see this being a, a seven point game. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, USC minus two as well. Um, to Justin's point, I think this is exactly what Vegas wanted is is for everybody to think that they could hammer uh, USC and then Tulane pull it off uh, like this. But um, I'm gonna go with the gut and and go with the Trojans here. The last few times we've seen a team walk in the conference championship weekend with a chance to win one game and make the playoff. They lose that game, they go to a bowl game, and they play another team that had no chance of making that playoff. And they all got stomped in that game because they maybe they quote-unquote didn't want to be there. Maybe they quote-unquote weren't fired up. Maybe they opted out. I don't know. Georgia got their ass whipped by Texas a few years ago. Auburn got their ass whipped by Central Florida a few years ago. Alabama got their ass whipped by Utah a few years ago. Last year, Ohio State was getting their ass whipped by Utah for 95% of that game. Tulane's going to beat USC in Dallas next week. All right. Spring it's going to happen. On it, JT said. Hammer that ML, whatever that is. I got them in the bowl pool, by the way. You can hedge that however you want. You can announce it. I got Tulane. <laughs> um, so I am putting my money where my mouth is. 
Let's slide it over out west. With bowl, the bowl game we were just talking about, Utah's going back to the Rose Bowl. They are a two-and-a-half point favorite over Penn State. Who do you guys got? I'm going to go with Utah. Uh, Utah typically plays good, very well in this game in the Rose Bowl. They played very well last year against Ohio State. They, they, um, I think they repeat that. I think Penn State's kind of a fraud. They got to go way out west. Um, I think there'll be a lot more Utah fans at this game. Um, give me Utah minus two and a half. I, th- I can see them winning this by a field goal. I'm gonna go with uh, the Penn State Nittany Lions. Oh wow! Yeah, give me the Penn State Nittany Lions plus the points. I'm with Chan here. Penn State is ten and two, ten and two with two losses to two teams that are in the college football playoff. Um, I know they kind of got smacked in the second half in that Michigan game and that Ohio State game. They played pretty tight for about three quarters. Um, I like them here against Utah. Utah isn't what they were last year. Um, I I think we all expected them to push and be at top five team, top six team. They're not. I think Penn State legitimately is a top six team. And if we're actually looking at accurately rating the playoffs, they should have been the five or six seed, not Alabama or Tennessee. So that being said, give me Penn State. Give me yeah, Penn I'm State. Clipping that. I'm clipping that and I'm throwing that in the Utah locker room. <laughs> Put it in there. Tag all of them. I said it right here. Um, let's talk about. Oh shit! I forgot to mention this game. Not New Year's Six game. LSU takes on Purdue. I was waiting for the, it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just completely skipped on that. LSU takes on Purdue in the what the fuck bowl game is it? It is the Wilson – or wait, what? I don't know, dude. Citrus Bowl. Or Citrus Bowl. Sorry, yeah. So they're playing this game in Orlando. Finally found it. Uh, LSU is a 14-and-a-half point favorite over Purdue. Purdue's Jeff Rom is no longer there. He's down in Louisville. Um, Aiden McConnell is opted out of this game. No mm. coach, no quarterback. No yeah, coach, no of, quarterback. Of, LSU, things going. I'm going to LSU minus 14 and a half just based on that alone. I agree, and we'll be taking the LSU Tigers minus 14 and a half as well. Are they baiting us with 14 and a half with LSU kind of stumbling down the stretch? No. Is that accurate? Baiting. Hey, I did see that Drew Brees is like the interim. He's an interim assistant coach. In He's game. not the interim head coach. No, it's the interim assistant coach. Okay. Is he going to be like a quarterback's coach for next year under, under Brom? Yeah. No, Brom left. I'm sorry, not Brom. Um, um, what's his name? Darren Lewis? Darren Lewis, yeah. And you, they just picked up Hudson Card from Texas. So he's got his quarterback for the next three years. Hey, man, anytime you can take Texas' QB1, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's a good pickup for you. They got Graham Harrell as their offensive coordinator as well, so they're going to be running that spread offense. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Not not nice enough for this game, though. I agree. I got LSU 14 and a half. All right. All right. Sugar Bowl. Time? Yes, this is the not, game not I want to talk about two, right here. Sugar two, Bowl. More, two more New Year's Six games. Two more New Year's Six games, and we got the playoff. Bama, Kansas State in the Sugar Bowl down in Nolens. Uh, Bama is a six and a half point favorite. Boy, they just love themselves in Crimson Tide, don't they? They do. Has, I like Kansas has, State in this game. Has Bryce Young said if he's playing or not? Yeah, he's playing. Only the center playing. Okay. He's playing. They're both I'm playing. Tide then. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Kansas State in this game plus six and a half. Um, based on the fact that I think Bryce Young and Will Anderson are kind of doing a, uh, a more of a media play on this, they're going to play in this game. I think this is a uh, – it makes them look very good that they're still practicing with the team. I'd be surprised if they play more than a half in this football game. All right. I like Kansas State. They've, they've, they've come on down the stretch. And, and Alabama is in prime. We should have been there territory. And they are, well, the two games they lost, they are also favorites in. Um, now let's talk about the orange, orange, orange bowl. We got the orange Tennessee Volunteers, the, the orange Clemson Tigers down in the Miami Orange Bowl. Uh, I want to say Clemson is a 
Five and a half. Four and a half point favorite. Uh, four and a half. I like Clemson. I think this is the Clemson team we should have seen all year. I think this is who they were if Club Neck had started the entire season. I think they would have been a playoff team. We all know DJ Ungalele isn't what we thought he was. Um, and when that when he when Club Neck's in, that offense is rocking. I mean, they just destroyed North Carolina in that that last game. Uh, I think they're going to be just fine here in Tennessee. Although I do think this will be a tight game because Tennessee's not that bad. I mean, Joe Milton is a good quarterback to still have out there. It's not like they're done. Like the one game Hen and Hooker didn't play, they still won fifty six to zero over a five win Vanderbilt team. I think it's still sure. a good win. We all got Clemson. I'm gonna go with Clemson as well. Um, I think that this is gonna be a very tight game. I was kind of torn on this game in the bowl pick 'em as well as uh right as I am right now. But I'm gonna try and not make it harder on myself than it needs to be and go with the Clemson Tigers here. I was worried about you. you. Kind of froze a little bit. I was like, "Uh oh, what's going on? What's going on?" <laughs> um, Justin, who you got? I'm actually going to go Tennessee um, in this game, plus four and a half. Uh, like you said, JT, I think Joe Milton. It's not really too big of a drop off from Hendon Hooker. Uh, that defense is still an SEC defense. Cade Klubnik's first ever start in college. Let's see what they're really about. Uh, they're about to get punched in the mouth by an SEC team that was pretty damn dominant all season long. So let's see what they're about. Spencer Rattler can do it. K club and they can do it. All right. Now for the casuals out there that think the sport is only built on four teams, two games. We are here. The college football playoff Hi. is here. Hey, you're back. Yeah. Chant. I was going to let it fly for the, for the non YouTubers. You got kicked out? Oh, you're back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, while you were gone, Chan, we're going to talk about this thing called the playoff. You heard of it? Never heard of her. <laughs> Never heard of her? So we pick the top four teams of college football and tell the other 126 to go fuck themselves because they're not important. That's what the casual fans do. That's why they want the thing expanded to 12, 24, 64, whoever the fuck they want it. We got the first game on Saturday, New Year's Eve. We have the TCU Horn Frogs going to Phoenix to take on no Michigan tones. Wolverines. I love the TCU season. I love the story. I love the fact that they are the hypnotodes. Year one of Sunny Dykes, everything is all gravy out there. I think it ends here. Ah. I think Michigan kicks the ever living shit out of them. Um, I think they rush the ball, no problem on them. And I think Michigan covers the seven and a half. I think they win by like 17. I'm going to have to go with the hypnotoads here. It's kind of a sketchy pick out of the hat. It's a, it's a, it's a trick magic trick that I just pulled out of the hat, but I think that they're kind of having that Cinderella season. I don't think they win this game, but I think that this game is a little bit closer than, than everybody's going to think it's going to be. Um, so with that, give me the TCU horn frogs. I like I, I like that pick, uh, Chan. Like I, I like where your heart's at, but I'm sorry, Michigan is going to beat the ever living piss out of TCU. Um, I think this line should be at least 17 points. I think that offensive line is going to be something that TCU has not seen all season long. Uh, their center won basically every single offensive lineman award in the country. Um, Donovan Edwards is a problem. He's a big play. He's a weapon. Um, J.J. McCarthy can play on the edge. Uh, he can throw the ball on the run. I think they're going to give TCU so many fits. Uh, I think this is going to be Michigan big here. All right. And one more one more thing before we move on. One of our very own Paige Browning will be boots on the ground, and she will be taking over our Instagram that day. Let's, Let's go. go. We have a boots on the ground live feed. Let's go. Live feed, boots on the ground. We're going to let her take over the password. We're going to take care of it. Um, it's going to be awesome. She actually made her own jean jacket and customized the hypno toad on the back of it and put glitter and sharpies and all that fun shit. So oh, you're going to shout out to Paige Brown. I thought, you, I thought you said she made her own custom third and long jacket. I was like, that's even more fire. Let's go. We'll see how many followers we get from it. But shout out Paige Brown. She's going to take care of us on New Year's. Um, the other playoff game 
the Ohio State Buckeyes will be taking on the Georgia Bulldogs. This will be Georgia's third game in Atlanta at the, the Falcon Stadium, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Um, Georgia will be a six-and-a-half-point favorite in this game. Um, I, Ohio State, there's no, no Smith and Jigba. There's no Travion Henderson. That offense, when they got adapted to in that Michigan game, was non-existent. And honestly, I think C.J. Stroud is the most overrated Ohio State quarterback we've had coming out of the draft since probably Troy Smith. Um, I like Georgia in this game to cover six and a half easy. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, is, is JT grabbing a hat? I'm grabbing a pen. I dropped my fucking pen. Oh, I thought you were grabbing a I thought you were grabbing a bulldog hat there going all the so on me for a second. That would have been sweet, but JT, I had to agree with you there. I'm gonna go with the Georgia Bulldogs as well. I think there's too much manpower on that side of the football uh for Ohio State. And that I think they're going to absolutely beat the brakes off of Ohio State as well. Um, don't even think it's gonna be close. So give me the Georgia Bulldogs. I agree. Uh, give me the Bulldogs in this game. I really don't think it's going to be close. Uh, I think Ohio State's kind of fraudulent. I think Michigan showed that. Uh, I think Georgia's going to probably go on the same game plan that Michigan did. Um, and I actually bet on this. Uh, went to the Golden Nugget <laughs> a month ago. I threw me a bet slip in that uh, Georgia and Michigan would play in the national championship. So – Let's, Let's ride. See. Let's ride. Let's see if that happens. But I think that might be all we have for the show tonight, the improvised show on the Zoom meeting. Thank you, for Vogel, for making this happen. Thanks for the boys to uh, take a little time out of their day to, to see, make sure that we got this in here this week. Um, looking forward to the bowl game tomorrow for the Rebs. Let's go, Rebs. Everybody put your Rebs up. Come on. Uh, but we appreciate y'all listening and look forward to seeing y'all again next week. Y'all have a happy new year. Please Uber. Don't drive. Have fun watching the playoffs. We'll see you happy guys new next year. year. Welcome.